and welcome to the Vaults of Terror. My name is Ed and today we're going to be continuing with our overview videos with a look at the Dark Eldar, the last Xenos race that we'll be featuring in our overview videos at the moment. Now the Dark Eldar are literally the dark mirror of the Eldar. They share the same level of technological prowess and scientific knowledge as the Eldar, but differ in their culture and overall philosophy, having taken a far darker and more sadistic path to avoiding the doom of the Eldar, also known as the Chaos God Slanesh. Now, they are a culture dedicated to sadism, as through absorbing the pain and suffering of others they gain power, and are able to resist the slow consumption of their souls by Slanesh. Now, in order to acquire the beings that they torture in order to gain this pain and suffering, the Dark Elder specialise in piracy and raids, attacking human or other Xenos colonies, and taking innumerable slaves back to their dark city that resides deep in the webway, known as Kamora. Their link to the ancient Eldar webway, which is where Kamora resides, allows them to conduct lightning-fast travel throughout the galaxy, and the Dark Elder can be found raiding right across it, although they do have favoured hunting grounds that they will raid repeatedly, such as Nocturne, the home homeworld of the Salamander Space Marine chapter. However, much like their craft world cousins, the Dark Elder are built for agility and speed, and have very little armour or heavy defences with which to resist a pitched battle, and so will usually retreat when outnumbered or meeting an overly stiff resistance from a planet's defenders. Now the Dark Elder are broken up into different groups, mainly led by groups known as Cabals, that's with a K, which will be controlled by various Archons, or Witch Cults, that's Witch with a Y, usually led by warriors known as Succubuses. Now, there are also homoculi covens containing the debased scientists of the Dark Eldar, whose art is sculpting biological flesh into grotesque new forms in order to either cause pain or create new flesh slaves to serve the Dark Eldar. Now, the overall ruler at the moment is Astrobael Vect, Archon of the Cabal of the Black Heart, who due to his status is the de facto ruler and supreme overlord of Kamora, and who claims to be one of the oldest Eldar left alive, claiming in fact that he founded Kamora, although this would make him in excess of 20,000 years old, and it is possibly a fabrication in order to secure his own power rather than the actual truth. Now it is to be noted here that the Imperium rarely makes the distinction between Craftworld and Dark Elder, not seeing the differences which are so obvious to the members of these races. As such, in the lore, Dark Elder are very rarely named that, either by themselves or the Imperium. It is usually only the Craftworld Elder and the Inquisition who study such things, who would be readily able to make a distinction and use the word Dark Elder rather than just Elder. Mainly the distinction is made in the lore using their appearance and their actions, not by using their correct name. Now, moving on to the history of the Dark Eldar, their origin lies in the fall of the Eldar and the birth of Slanesh. Now, they were in truth the occupants of Kamara at the height of its power, when it was a hub for all the trade within the webway, because it exists within the webway itself, and it was the primary port for the Eldar Empire's ships. As such, it was so powerful that it became an independent faction of the Eldar Empire, and developed its own set of laws and customs. This also meant it was a hub for the criminals escaping the Empire itself, and in time developed a dark underclass, hidden behind the city's immunity to outside interference. It also gathered other node realms from within the webway to itself, linking them together to form greater and greater space for the burgeoning metropolis to expand into. Kamora was also subject to the changes in the Eldar over the millennia, and at the time of the fall, which is mentioned in more detail in my Eldar video, it had also given in to the hedonistic sadism that had gripped the entire empire, becoming the main centre for the Eldar's pleasure cults that even the most depraved human would find horrifying. However, when the fall occurred, the occupants within Kamora were actually protected from the initial blast by the supremely powerful warp battles that make up the webway structure. However, even they were not protected from the all-consuming hunger of Slanesh, and discovered their souls were slowly being consumed even whilst protected within the webway. In order to survive, the Dark Elder turned away from their psychic powers, rejecting them as folly that led to the fall, and instead turning to the sadism that had truly brought about their end, using the extracted pain and suffering of others to ward off the consumption of their souls. Note that other extreme emotions can be used to fill the void in their soul, but the Dark Elder prefer pain and suffering, as to them these are the sweetest of emotions, and have the most power to hold off the hunger of Slanesh. This sadistic culture remains to this day, and is a dark window into the Elder's past, showing the Craftworld Elder what they could have been like had they stayed the course of their old empire. Now, biologically, the Dark Elder and the Craftworld Elder share many traits. They are tall, by human standards, lithe and agile, with pointed ears and eyes. 
They also do resemble humans, having both a male and female gender. However, the Dark Eldar's skin tone is pale white or grey, bordering on almost translucent due to the constant darkness of their home. They actually have superior strength and reflexes to the Craftworld Eldar, as almost all Dark Eldar are trained as warriors and focus on causing harm, with a speed that borders on supernatural. In some instances, it's been seen that they've even been able to dodge las bolts in flight, which has been recorded by the Imperium, and of course suppressed by the Inquisition. Now, their senses are also sharper, again hearing and sight being vital in the dark world of Komora, and where survival of the fittest is the rule and every edge counts. However, the natural psychic nature of the Elder has withered within the Dark Elder, and there are almost no psychers among the Dark Elder, and any that do exist are shunned or regarded with suspicion. This is likely a result of the taboo amongst the Dark Elder for psychic powers stemming from the time of the Fall, and their innate fear of Slanesh. This also means that psychers are expressly forbidding from entering Kimura, and if any are found amongst the slaves they take, they will be executed and vented out an airlock to avoid them attracting attention to the city itself. Now, finally, I just want to talk about the technology of the Dark Elder. Now, the technology of the Dark Elder does rival that of their Craftworld kin, however they do not have the ability to create Wraithbone, as that would require a psychic bone singer to bring forth and manipulate the Wraithbone itself. And because they have no psychers amongst their ranks, the Dark Elder must instead rely on more inferior materials, such as crystalline or metallic elements, which, whilst still strong and flexible, do not have the same level of mutability as Wraithbone. However, they do use similar elder devices such as anti-gravity devices, dark matter weaponry such as dark lances, nanotechnology and psychic artifacts. Now it should be puzzling that they have psychic artifacts being a culture that rejects psychic powers, however the artifacts mentioned are not direct creations of the dark elder. They are either relics of a bygone age or stolen from other civilizations and used in order to either create pain, of course because that is the primary motivation of all dark elder, or in fact to strengthen the dark elder themselves and allow them to gather more slaves in order to fuel the torture within their city. Now, they also use a large amount of biotechnology, with the homoculi creating everything from combat drugs and other stimulants to the Frankenstein's monster creatures, which are the husks and grotesques. Now, they even modify Dark Elder bodies themselves, examples being the winged scourges, whose avian bodies are melded and morphed by the homoculi's dark art. Now, as with the Elder, the Dark Elder vehicles do use anti-gravity technology and even look quite similar, with the Elder Viper and the Dark Elder Venom looking almost identical structurally, whilst the Dark Elder and Elder Jet Bikes are almost interchangeable, although the Dark Elder do tend to adorn their vehicles with thorns, spikes, barbs, anything that looks like it could inflict pain upon others whilst not appearing to be too much more deadly. This is also reflected in their weaponry, their primary weaponry being splinter weapons rather than shuriken weapons, firing razor-sharp crystals at the enemy which which are usually poisoned, and so regardless of the size of the enemy, if they're unarmoured, they can bring down even the toughest of opponents with even their smallest weapons. So that's everything I have to say in a basic overview of the Dark Elder. Of course, there will be more mentioned in later videos surrounding their culture, their background, and their technology. Of course, this is also the last video where we were overviewing what some of the major Xenos races. So coming up soon will be some overview videos on other elements of the Warhammer 40,000 universe, including an overview of the Mechanicus, the Sisters of Battle, and the Inquisition, three of the three of the major powers within the Imperium which I have yet to talk about. Of course, we are still going to be doing our Imperial Guard and Space Marine videos just to round off the chapters and regiments that we haven't covered yet. Of course, if you do have any other suggestions of what you'd like to see, you can leave it in the comment section below or send me a personal message. If you do have a question, again, the comment section is open, but you can of course go to the Vox Relay, the Vaults of Terror forums, which will be linked in the description box below. There you can go and ask the rather knowledgeable community any questions that you have related to the Warhammer 40,000 universe, or just in relation to any videos that I've displayed today. So that's everything I've got to mention today. See you next time on the Vaults of Terror. <laughs>